In this question, we're provided with the images and descriptions of two solids, solid X and solid Y. And we're trying to figure out which of these structures has the strongest interparticle forces holding it together. So first, let's look at solid X. We're told that it's a molecular solid in which the molecules contain polar covalent bonds between hydrogen and fluorine. So let's have a look at the image we've got there. You can see those individual molecules and you can see those lines between the hydrogen and fluorine atoms. Those are the covalent bonds. And we've got to notice that the covalent bonds are only within the molecule. They're not between the molecules. In a molecular solid, there are several types of forces holding these together. Dispersion forces, that's the most basic type of force. Dispersion forces can happen between any two molecules. They don't have to be polar molecules. And this basically happens because the electrons in uh, the energy levels of an atom are always moving around. And so sometimes there might be more electrons on one side of an atom and fewer on the other. And sometimes they might be more evenly balanced. At the moments where the electrons are more on one side, which we can kind of represent by drawing a like electron cloud. So if the electrons are more spread to one side at a given moment, that side is going to get a little bit of a negative charge, which is called a dipole. And the side that has less electrons at that moment, because they've gone to the other side, that's going to get a little positive charge called a positive dipole. So dispersion forces happen when these kind of random fluctuations in the location of the electrons cause these momentary dipoles or charged ends to form. And when this happens on different molecules, say, for example, I had a molecule here that had the same thing happen to happen at the same time. Those positive and negative dipoles could attract one another just for a moment holding the structure together. So this is what happens on the most basic level in a molecular solid. These forces are not very strong, which is why molecular solids typically have very low boiling points, very low melting points, etc. Now, if we instead have polar molecules, so let's say that the molecule contains some elements that have fairly different electronegativities. That means that instead of having just these temporary dipoles caused when we have fluctuations, we have permanent dipoles on our molecules. One end is always positively charged and one end is always negatively charged. So it's the same type of attraction between them, but it's happening all the time. So uh, those are called dipole-dipole interactions. So if disper let's list this up. Dispersion force is the lowest, least strong type of force. Dipole-dipole forces work exactly the same way, but they're permanent. So this one is temporary. And this one is permanent. So because of that, it's stronger. And so if we have a molecular compound containing polar molecules, it's going to have slightly higher boiling point, higher melting point, etc., because the forces between the molecules are slightly stronger. Now, one step up from that, but the same idea again, is where we have hydrogen bonds. Now, hydrogen has a very low electronegativity. Of all the non-metals, hydrogen has a low electronegativity. And when hydrogen is combined with particular elements, such as fluorine, that have very high electronegativities, we get hydrogen bonds formed between our molecules, which are exactly the same as dispersion forces and dipole-dipole forces. The only difference is that because hydrogen has such a low electronegativity and elements such as fluorine have a very high electronegativity, the molecules are extra polar. And so those uh, forces between them are even more strong. So hydrogen bonds, or hydrogen bonding.
That's our next strongest. It's very similar to dipole dipole, but it's stronger because we have more polar molecules because we've got a greater difference in electronegativity. So those are the types of bonds we could have in a molecular solid. Since our solid X is uh, contains polar covalent bonds in the molecules between hydrogen and fluorine, that's hydrogen bonding happening there. So we can select hydrogen bonding for solid X. Solid Y also contains covalent bonds. In the description, it says it's a covalent network solid and it consists of one element only. Now, notice in the covalent network solid that everything is connected with covalent bonds. We don't have individual molecules. So in this solid, covalent bonds are the interparticle forces and covalent bonds are incredibly strong. So covalent bonds between all of the particles, those are the interparticle forces holding solid Y together and those are very strong bonds. So in this case, solid Y has the strongest interparticle forces holding it together because covalent bonds are much stronger than hydrogen bonds. There are some other types of bonds as well. We have ion-ion bonds and metallic bonds, which those are both somewhere in the middle. So ion-ion bonds, that's what we get in ionic compounds, or metallic bonds. Metallic bonds are between positively charged ions and a sea of electrons. And these are different types of bond, but they have similar um, strength. They're both pretty strong um, since we've got oppositely charged things attracted to one another, but they're not quite as strong as covalent bonds.